Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's Kubert community meeting. It's Wednesday, October 6th, 2021. Um, I'm your host, Chris Caligari, and uh, this is your opportunity to talk to uh, core developers and other users of the project um, with uh, anything you'd like to talk about uh, regarding using or developing for Kubert. Uh, I'm going to paste the meeting notes into chat. Everybody could uh, open that up and add your attendance. Um, we do track that. And uh, please add any items you'd like to speak about into the agenda or open floor. Okay, let's look at our attendance. I think uh, got a few folks here that I don't recognize. Uh, would you like to say hi and uh, and uh, introduce yourself? Leonardo. Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay. Um, I joined. I joined a few. This is my second call. Actually, I joined a few weeks ago. This is my first one, and I've been using Covert for um, to run. I'm actually some using it to. I have a service that runs our pen builds, so I'm currently using it to bootstrap virtual machines on demand to run those builds and get the resulting RPM artifact and upload somewhere else in a Kubernetes operator. Very nice. I um, actually had a, sorry, I, I was going to put in the, the chat, but since I'm talking here. Mm -hmm. um, so my team has an API that creates um, virtual machines on a, on a VM vendor. So I was wondering how hard it would be to create, uh, I don't know if it's a, what you call it, a convert plugin or something like that, that would create a virtual machine on that vendor rather than on KVM, if that would be even possible. Because I know I know there, there are, there's AWS support or other um, run times, if you will. Uh, does that make sense or? Yeah, um, we usually, for the, for deploying to cloud providers, we usually uh, just do embedded um, virtualization. Okay. And we have several uh, large customers doing that exact thing with some of AWS's larger offerings and even their bare metal offerings. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Yeah, uh, that's definitely a, a great topic for uh, further on in the agenda. Um, so if uh, we don't have anything else, let's talk about that more. If anybody else has more opinions on that. What does everyone think about uh, using alternative um, virtualization aside? Um, KVM. I know this. This has uh, been a recent topic, also. Was it was it KVM or KBI? What was that? Yeah, there's somebody else was asking if uh, if uh, if Cooper could do a different virtualization mechanism aside QEMU or. KVM. So now, now we're talking about um, doing embed more embedded virtualization in a cloud provider. Would it be talking to the cloud provider directly to make the VM, or would it be doing? You said embedded virtualization, so so still a VM within a VM, but uh, that's what I'm been doing. Yeah, that's what, that's what the the DDesk guys are going to do, and same with uh, 
Johnson controls. I, mean, I this definitely room for improvement. So yeah, I don't see why it couldn't be a thing. I'm not on the developer side of Qvert, so I wouldn't be able to give my proper two cents. But I would I would like that feature to have more alternative uh, VM up virtualization options. So we're talking about changing out the dev KVM endpoint for something else. Was that was that a question for him or are you asking me? Just to, yeah, 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 in general. Like, I think this is just something we need to contemplate on because it's uh it's come up several times now. Yeah, well that's fine. Yeah, and I'm not opposed to anything. Uh the the only question I have is we we do use libvert uh currently as a you know as the layer, the shim layer, if you will, the, to communicate with the virtualization uh, it, engine, if you will. And so that's, I mean, it's an interesting topic, but it, you know, there may be some technical difficulties that we need to think on because we're very, we're very, very closely tied, excuse me for my stammering, uh, to, to Libvirt at this point. So I, I don't know. I mean, that would, it would just require some, I've seen Careful, people ask in the past for like, oh, can can I create an e, you know an EC2 VM with Kubert? And that is a hard no. <laughs> so, but if it's like a system hypervisor, uh, maybe still probably no. It would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Does uh does Libbert have any hook into Zen? No, I don't believe yeah. that it does. Uh, and, and I'm speaking out of turn. I haven't actually checked, but uh, Zen is a very different uh, thing uh, than so yeah. KVM is kind of it's it, everything is exposed through the system device, if you will. Uh, Zen yeah. actually has a different kernel, and so it's not yeah, yeah. it's not just a casual thing to to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the reason why I was asking about that is um, there's large Zen uh, installations out there still. Yeah, I, know for sure, I know for sure in large finance there is. Sorry for this, uh, interrupting, but I, I think that, I mean, the answer is pretty, I don't know why it get complicated. We are COVID currently supports only KVM. We, we live it with KVM and chemo, and it's not it's not possible to, to put there something else. I guess a, a feature request to decouple this and create some interface that can allow others to integrate may be possible, but we are really far from it mm -hmm. at the moment. Is it is what I said? Is it? Uh, is it wrong or? Oh no, that's uh, it's it's good. Um, this is uh, like I said, this is probably the third time in two weeks that this is that this topic has come up, so it's worth talking about and contemplating on and seeing if there's a uh, a potential new feature to come out of this the discussion. I think if, if, I mean, the only thing that uh, can be done at this stage is maybe trying to to put a, a well-defined interface between the workflow of Kubert and, uh, and Livert. And then if others can uh, integrate in the same place and do the same things, then maybe it's possible. But well, uh, uh, no, uh, we, we shouldn't be, how to say, we, we build the containers that are Kubevert. And so it's not somebody else's problem. It's ours if we're going to support this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
but but as as Edward was pointing out, like as of today, this is not something we're targeting or able to support. I think the question we need to ask ourselves is how much adoption would this drive? Because it, like how yes, it's come up three times, and so we should have the discussion. But but d why would like if if I'm building a a web service that runs in virtualization or something. Why do I care what the engine is? Like, why is that such a, a sticking point? I think it gets strange when you're when you're trying to do hybrid hybrid cloud, and you're trying to route traffic between on-prem and a cloud provider. Okay, so this the use case here is some other cloud uh, doing the virtualization and we're simply managing the virtual machines. Yeah. So you end up with two stacks. Yeah. You've still got the, yeah. the OpenShift layer that's running Kubevert and then something else somewhere else that's running the VMs. Yeah, it, does, it sure feels like it's getting into like Ansible or Terraform land. It sounds like a completely to... different project. I mean, mm -hmm. Kubert is running on KVM, and I don't think that we have any plans to change that. Well, I wouldn't say that it would be something that would have to be a complete change, more of like an addition. I think I agree with uh, Vladik. It's a diff different project. Mm. All, uh, all uh, the evaluation of the current one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, this uh, this topic has come up three times now in, in two weeks, so that's why I thought I'd, it's worth discussing discussing here. And again, Johnson Controls is a very large installation, and it, it was it came the question came from them as well, and it uh. It arose through that uh, that uh, um, basically I got hunted down by a solutions engineer through YouTube. Um, the the solutions engineer was challenged to find a solution, and and uh, he was given uh, a vert CTL command to start a virtual machine, and didn't know what that meant, and. Uh, for some reason, he searched on YouTube, and then our, our demo came up. So it was a, a very strange start to that conversation. Ooh, whoever's talking has got very low volume. It's, it's hit me again. I don't know why, but every time I start Zoom, uh, my volume is decreased to 10%. Yeah, um, what, what actually, what problem are they actually trying to solve? Um, what was the thing that they wanted to, to solve in general? Do they have a current, uh, um, um, some, some, some alternative uh, to KDM running somewhere and they are looking at whether they can integrate that or what, what do they want to do? Um, they, uh, they have a wide variety of, uh, of small virtual machines that they need to talk to each other. And they're, they're scattered around on-prem and cloud. And um, so they uh, were very interested in uh, P2V and B2B and uh, and how uh, how we are able to 
operate on a multi software defined network. But nevertheless, they also uh, talked about um, this alternative virtualization options uh, with embed using uh, embedded virtualization on a cloud provider. Maybe we can we can invite them to the to the Qboard community meeting and and uh, ask them what they exactly they want to solve. Probably, I definitely did that. <laughs> But they don't want to, or <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, um, these uh, a lot of these companies are really uh, hesitant to get get directly involved with uh, open source, even after uh, twenty five years of using the Linux kernel. Okay, <laughs> it's it's strange to me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is the right forum to ask such questions, right? So, mm -hmm. um, if, if they want answers, I think they should get here and um, ask them here. But yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, well, um, let's table this uh, this topic and and think about it. Um, if there's if uh, we want to uh, formalize this, we can create an issue and uh, have the conversation through GitHub uh, or the or even the mailing list, of course. I don't think we're gonna, this is gonna be the end of this, uh, uh, of this topic for sure. Okay. Who's next? Besides me and talking about boring uh, events and community stuff. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, can I? Can I just? Uh, I um, just didn't fill in anything. Uh, so um, just a quick heads up of that. Uh, Yesterday, I think the 122 uh, zig lanes uh, got to run every time. So, um, yeah, one step, one small step forward, at least. Um, yeah, what we are also uh, wanting to do is uh, to disable the always run on the 1.90 lanes. But this is still not uh, not finished yet. Did you say the lanes now always run? Yeah, uh, okay. it's like um, we we have uh, we always uh, test have test lanes for all the ZIGs uh, for the latest three providers that we have, and currently we are in a state where we have four providers, but one point nineteen should fade out, and um, yeah, we are currently in the process of uh, running the one twenty two lanes always, and um yeah over time the 1.19 lanes will go away did you say 1.9 or 1.19 sorry 1.19 okay 90 got it no sorry 19 oh. <laughs> one nine <laughs> i don't know why i'm not hearing well <laughs> oh well be that i've been up since 5 a.m <laughs> Maybe I'm just I'm just mumbling. It's fine. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. <laughs> I guess I, since we're talking about CI, um, we added uh, uh, check linting to the website CI a couple weeks ago. Um, we had to retract that on Friday um, because of a bad image. And it uh, was causing a, a big blockage in new pull requests. So uh, we'll try again sometime soon. Uh, the markdown in the website and, uh, and the user guide uh, needs a lot of massaging to comply to, to, to standard markdown. So that's why we wanted um, linting 
Yeah, I actually um, I was the one that was going to take on the PR, but I got caught up with a lot of work because I was transitioning departments and everything. So uh, I'm also, I'm okay to take that on again. I just, that was uh, my fault, I guess I'm saying. No, it, it's okay. Uh, another community member took it on and uh, and he slipped something in that um, that didn't work well. We had to take it out. Um, we have linting in the in the local make file, um, but um, it's up to the user to to run it um, locally, and so we we want to get that into into CI. And the image that we were using didn't actually didn't even have um, Podman installed, so that was that messed things up. We'll get it. It's we're we're very close to to getting it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Is there a is there another PR I could watch and kind of assist them with? Um, Reach out to whoever's yeah, working give, on. Uh, there's no PR, but there there is an issue. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll provide you the, the issue um, after the meeting, if you don't mind. Perfect, thanks. Uh, Chris, I have a bullet down below. Maybe I can talk about it real quick uh, before you continue. Oh, yeah, uh, please, let's move you up. <laughs> uh, does, is that the poll request? Yeah. Okay, sure. So uh, yeah, it's just a pull request about um, the live migration policies. So I talked about it in one of the community meetings. So basically there was a design proposal and many conversations about it. And um, I decided eventually to like have a POC of the initial impl implementation um, without the controversial stuff. And just so we have something working. Um, and then maybe the, the, the continue uh, discussion will be easier. Um, so yeah, it's there if somebody want to take a look. Um, yeah, and that's it. So if, if uh, you don't remember, it's basically um, uh, migration uh, policies for migration that can be um, uh, used per VM or as I mean right now it's per namespace. Basically, it overrides the configurations that exist in uh, Qubit Qubit CR, and um, and that way you can fine grain um, uh, configurations regarding uh, migrations and adjust it to a set of uh, virtual machines. Currently, it's just uh, to namespaces, but um, um, I, I guess that in the future it will support um, other ways of defining sets of virtual machines. I see you. Uh, this is a 23 day old pull request. Sorry about that. Let's uh, get these guys. Oh, no worries. Uh, I think Itamar was on vacation during that time. Oh, okay. So I, I'm aware of the PR. <laughs> oh, okay. So no need to ping then? That's okay. Okay. So oh, I hear a little one. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, she's at home. <laughs> well, enjoy your time with her because uh, they grow up fast. I have three that are sleeping in the other room and they grow up fast. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Itamar. Um, Hopefully uh, we had some attention on that and um, glad I can help you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Evan, do you wanna take on the uh, unprivileged VMs? Talk about unprivileged VMs. Hey, sure. Hi. Hi. So 
there was uh, a discussion, actually two discussions about uh, different new ID or user for unprivileged VMs. And I'm going to probe this uh, topic and see if there is a uh, really need for this. And if so, we probably need some uh, adjustments, uh, for example, with the control risks as uh, Roman pointed out there in the comment. So yeah, to my question, is there someone who want to have different UID or user for unprivileged VMs? Or anybody see a possibility or a use case for this? Um... Sorry, go ahead, Sue. Sorry about that. Uh, I always just stop talking because it's the safest thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so is the question about um, exploring using UIDs other than uh, 107, was that what we were talking about? Yeah, yes. Is there any ramification with SE Linux or anything of that nature? Can you be or, more specific with the question? Well, I mean, we. <clears throat> so let's let's start somewhere else. What's the motivation for wanting to use a different UID? What what's what does that help? Yeah, that I mean, that's what I'm trying to see if there is actually motivation to use another UID or the user. Uh, I okay. saw Vasily was asking for this. Uh, maybe he has an idea for this. Uh, it's not about a different UID. It's about hard coding some arbitrary one, let's say. So uh, we, we faced a problem some time ago when building our custom images that uh, there was no user with UID 107 in our base image. Uh, currently, this is fixed, but uh, probably it may raise some issues at some point later on. But to be honest, for now, I don't know uh, how to mitigate this issue. So it's in the long term, let's say. O only uh, if we implement something like suggested by David, I guess, with uh, uh, init container and virt launcher. But yeah, it's a bit of. Uh, quite some work, I'd say, to do it. I have to admit being surprised that we would use 107 and not like a, a user nobody. 107 is a default Koyama user, I think, in Fedora and some other distros. So that's gotcha. Good. OK, I understand now. But you said that user 107 did not exist in some it, some base images, right? Uh, yeah, in SUSE image, uh, at some point it wasn't present, let's mm. say. Uh, it was uh, allocated dynamically for Kuyama user, I think, in uh, one of our versions. Mm. But c currently we kind of fix it in our container, so it's not a problem for us. But... OK. And yes, yeah, since uh, this also goes uh, further to container disks, that uh, even in the user docs, it's referred uh, that it's better to uh, change ownership right away to avoid some weird things with the, uh, with some storage, some storage issues. So yeah, it's kind of a bit more complicated. So for, for, for now, from my side, I cannot suggest a better solution than hard coding. I agree with it. But it's something to think about, probably. Yes. OK, thank you. I mean, yeah, I see the problem here. Uh, we also stumbled upon it, that the handler did have different uh, ID, I think. 
Um, so from this discussion, uh, maybe a, there could be a point that we should move for, uh, from this mechanism of discovering the Kimo ID from handler to the specific uh, launcher, which should be not a major issue. Signs we, sh signs we can probably probe the local database of the launcher. And yeah, so if there is no need for the different UIDs, then probably this would be sufficient. I think it would be good if we would uh, be able to consolidate all of this, uh, uh, all of these uh, definitions of UIDs in one place, because right now it's uh, like spread across the code from what I've seen. Yeah, that will be challenging. <laughs> So, so this idea of uh, bringing everything into um, like a vert config. I mean, I, I guess, is it bad or? It might be, but it can be uh, tempted to use it then to change their user for dynamically. For example, I, I ch or we can default to, to 107 and then somebody came and uh, change it to 1000, then we need to be prepared for the situation and work with the possibility that this can be changed in runtime. So I'm not sure if, if it's worth the uh, complexity. Okay. So our, our last comment here is 23 days ago. Um, so um, let's uh, get some comments in into this pull request so we can get get moving along. Yeah, don't worry. I will mm -hmm. I will move on from this. Okay, thank you, Ivan. This is a, an important uh, feature to Kubert. Okay, um, I'm gonna take over for a little bit and uh, talk about some com community things. Um, we have two events coming up within two weeks and uh, it's got me a little frantic. Uh, the KubeCon NA office hours is coming up. Um, David Vassell and I will be hosting that. We are going to follow Alicia's uh, framework for from the KVM forum and Sam Walker also. Uh, they used uh, um, a slide deck and uh, the Catacoda scenarios that we have posted to O'Reilly.Catacoda.com. And uh, they had a great success with that. You didn't have to worry about any, any met, uh, bare metal servers and deployment problems. It was just copy and paste into, into the scenarios. And uh, it was made for a very fast and impactful demonstration of Kubert. So we're going to do that for both KubeCon and All Things Open, which uh, for All Things Open, Stu, Sam, and I are working like crazy now to get our Raspberry Pi demo up and running. Um, for how close would you guys say that we are to getting that demo put together? 99%? Uh, <laughs> somewhere between one and 99 percent so, <laughs> i will say the good news is uh Stu was able to use my uh open super image and join just fine uh so i think as far as using tested images i haven't worked on debian 11 so there might be differences between that and it too um but he was able to join q proxies that restarted like it was yesterday so if you do the same you could probably get a join in or can progress from there 
<laughs> okay. We're at the 11th hour here. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, but yeah, just, just to caution, there's still mileage. Once once we get a Kubernetes cluster up, then we still need to put Kubernetes on it and, and actually build the demo. So yeah. I'd say we're, honestly, we're probably closer to mm, 50 to 60% of the way complete. <laughs> Why we wait to the last minute to forge new ground is... <laughs> it's just not exciting if there's no terror. <laughs> <laughs> it is Halloween season. <laughs> Spooky, scary skeletons. <laughs> Spooky, scary raspberry pies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, the next two weeks are going to be frantic. Um, after that, we have no events. If anybody thinks of, uh, can think up of an event or they come across a, a major event in their internet wanderings and they, you think that Kubert would be uh, would have a valuable presence, let me know. I'll get it on our schedule. And I'm not going to open up that picture <laughs> live, <laughs> at a live meeting. <laughs> Okay, um, we uh, are putting together the due diligence for graduation to CNCF incubation and uh, came across some really interesting community statistics. And I wanted to show you this. Um, so we've been doing uh, bug scrubs and um, it's having an effect, and uh, and you can see this in our uh, in in dev stats, which is a this uh, graph is a measurement of how long issues sit in GitHub before they have a response, and uh, the average is four days, which is down significantly from uh, from last year. Uh, of course, our our monthly metrics gathering hasn't run yet so we kind of flatline towards the end there as the, the month progresses but this is really good stuff um, we don't we don't look at these metrics um, very often and uh, uh, the questions came up when uh, we're talking about community health so this uh, was pretty jaw dropping uh, so this is issue response. Um, this is pull request time to engagement, which uh, we were just talking about a pull request that had 23 days since the last uh, engagement. Uh, this is clearly uh, lower as well. We have uh, the number of companies uh, contributing to Kubert. So again, the, the month is not complete. So we get a flat line here. So um, this is a really good metric. Uh, unfortunately, not all 30 of these companies allow us to publish their, uh, their names on our website. Uh, I'm working on that. And then here is a graph of individual uh, contributors. So over the course of two years, we have a, a nice uh, linear increasing trend. And those are a few more um, positive notes for uh, to back up our, our graduation. I don't want to go and get deeply into contemplating on these graphs. I just wanted to show everybody. Um, we have yet another due diligence document, and this one is way more extensive than the others. Uh, if you'd like to review it, I posted a link out into um, the the meeting notes. Um, don't do any direct editing um, because uh, 
uh, just like make comments or, or suggestions. Uh, this is a, a format that uh, Elena with uh, the CNCF wants to follow. So I think we're up to five different due diligence documents now. Okay, thank you for that amount of time. Um, Daniel has posted some pull requests. Yeah, to be honest, this is just more um, some uh, to get a little bit of awareness on that. Um, one thing is um, that what we're what we are uh, using for. Testing Qbert is uh, that that we are um, just uh, generating local or, or uh, virtualized clusters of uh, Kubernetes, right? And this is Qbert CI, and uh, Qbert CI has a couple of add-ons like the CNAO and CDI, which are required for testing certain things. And what I did was just, um, I just optimized the uh, installation of the add-ons. So this should shave a little bit of a cluster uptime on that, which um, might be beneficial at least for, for testing at, uh, besides CI also for local testing. And if anyone is interested in looking into that, probably has some ideas on how to even make, make this probably even better or something that, that would, I would be happy to, to receive the feedback of that. Yeah, it's, it of course it doesn't doesn't need to uh, get get done uh, right away. Um, just uh, so anyone uh, who has time can take a look if you want. Oh my gosh, Daniel! Does anybody have time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so, so I would I would I would guess that everyone would say no, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So okay, I go back and, and uh, wind a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, anything that can help with that cluster up. Yeah. Okay. Is this another cluster up? Uh, yeah, this is also? this is, uh, this is actually a real issue. Okay. <laughs> Due to the um, introduction of the whereabouts, uh, we have some problems on the um, check cluster up that is run whenever. We, um, uh, we uh, try to provision the new clusters and then check whether everything is coming up. So everything is okay. There, the whereabouts has a cron job that is installed, which launches some, some uh, worker pods. And um, these are getting into the way of the, of the check that, um, that uh, checks whether everything is okay. And yeah, my, my quick fix was just um, to patch the, the cron job so that they have a type TTL of zero, which in general directly deletes pods, but they sometimes are still there and the check fails. And uh, this makes the uh, checks in the, in the lanes makes, makes flaky. And so mm -hmm. what I did was um, uh, I just uh, tried to delete uh, periodically the IP reconciler pods. So in order to make the check run again, so or work again. Um, yeah. Nice. Hey, Daniel, I noticed uh, about a month ago, um, Red Hat was hiring to help with Kubert CI. Did anything ever come about that from that? That's a good question, to be honest. Um, I'm not really sure about that. I would need to look that up. I, I don't know. Okay. How are you feeling? Are you feeling uh, overwhelmed with all the CI work that has been going on? 
Oh, well, I, I try to keep my head above water, right? And um, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, it's okay. Okay. Uh, and we have... like, like uh, Federico is also there, right? So mm -hmm. uh, um, a couple of other people who are also helping from time to time. So, okay. so it's fine. Okay. Good to know. Um, so that takes us to 7.48. Um, did we do a, we did a good bug scrub last week. Um, and it looks like we have uh, one more user that came late. And we'd like to make an introduction. Brock, would you like to talk for a little bit? Brock, would you like to say hi to the group and introduce yourself? If you don't hear yourself talking, you might also get caught by this 10% um, volume issue that Zoom issues on every time starting Zoom again, <laughs> maybe. See, I'm on. Uh, Apple OS X. <laughs> Do we? Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Hey. 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 Yeah, we can hear you. Hey. My name is Barak. Uh, I'm doing the virtualization team and I'm from Israel. Can you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome, welcome to the project. Ah, thank you. Finally. Mm -hmm. And that is it. Okay, well, glad to have you aboard and I'll look forward to look forward to working with you. Thank you. Okay, uh, yes, uh, all in favor of uh, skipping a bug scrub this week? I'll return 10 minutes to you. Hi. Thank you, Chris. Okay, we have one eye and uh, that's a super majority. <laughs> 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 okay okay everyone thanks for for joining this week and we will see you next week and uh have a good week thank you thank you everyone see you bye thanks bye